Less than 90 minutes away from Denver, there's a place that has landscapes, more landscapes, and a lot of these guys. In this episode, we're going to Brainerd Lake. In this guide, I'll go over everything that you need to know about how to have a successful photography session in Brainerd Lake. We'll start with the basics, like how do you get in? Spoiler alert, you need a reservation. Then we'll go over my equipment recommendations, including what kind of lenses I think you should bring. Uh, we'll go over what kind of wildlife you can expect to see. I'll point out a few places where I think the best spots are to see that wildlife. And then at the very end, I'll give my overall recommendation about the timed entry fee, when I think would be best to go in. And I will give sort of my itinerary of how I think you can have the most successful day at Brandon Lake. Like most popular Colorado recreation areas, Brainerd Lake does require a reservation. The days of just showing up are long gone. Uh, fortunately, this process is easy enough and pretty straightforward. Just go to the Brainerd Lake Recreation Area homepage and go down to the At a Glance section. And there is a link for the parking reservation system. Click on that and then you'll see a calendar. Pick the day that you want to go and it will bring up all of the available time windows that are available for that day. Uh, it will always show you how many reservations are left for that day. I have found that they don't sell out quickly and this is a reservation that you can make up to about a week in advance and you'll be just fine. Um, also note that on the weekdays, there are different time windows than on the weekends. So that's something to be aware of. Also, there is a section for camping that is its own separate reservation but I am not really including that in this video. This is just if you were going to go up to Brainerd Lake for just the day. Lens recommendations. First, I'm gonna start with the advanced photographer. This is a photographer who has multiple lenses to choose from. Uh, first, you're going to want to bring a wide angle lens. Um, the landscapes are just too good to pass up on and you will regret not having a wide angle. So that would be my first lens. Second, I would have a good, fast mid-range lens. I brought my 70 to 200, which is f2.8. You will love having fast lens when those moose are back in the shadows and it'll really help with that shutter speed and get less blur. And then of course you wanna bring your big telephoto. I use the Sony 200 to 600. So bringing something equivalent to that, of course, is always standard for wildlife photography. You'll want it. Lastly, I found that a teleconverter actually wasn't necessary. I brought mine anyway, but I didn't come anywhere close to needing it. So bring it if you have the room, but it's not necessary. For my beginning photographers, these are photographers who have a DSLR, but maybe don't have the widest lens selection to choose from. I would bring whichever lens you have that has the furthest reach. And don't be afraid to manipulate some of the settings within your camera to help compensate for those lenses that may not be as fast. For example, don't be afraid to shoot at really high ISOs if that gives you a faster shutter speed, because you could do some pretty amazing things in post-production nowadays with noise reduction and really recover a lot of that stuff that may be lost due to not having the strongest lens. So that's my recommendation for the beginning photographers. And for my smartphone only users, don't worry, you're not left out in the cold here. There's plenty of things for you to still get Instagrammable or threadable, if that becomes a thing. <laughs> shots up there. The landscapes are too beautiful that you will be able to go up there and make those kind of shots. For wildlife, you're probably not going to be able to make any good shots with a smartphone, but there's still plenty of other things to shoot up there if you only have a smartphone. For my birders out there, even though Brainerd Lake isn't really known as a birding hotspot, there are some things to see. I kept a mental note the other day when I was there of species that I saw, which included the following. Uh, for jays, I saw a Canada jay. I saw a Stellar's jay, very briefly. Uh, chickadees, I saw mountain chickadees and black cap chickadees. I saw a white crowned sparrow. I saw a few Lincoln sparrows. I believe I saw even a chipping sparrow. Um, there are plenty of warblers also to see there. Uh, yellow warblers, Wilson's warblers, Townsend's warblers can be seen there. And I did see even a few hermit thrush. Owl-wise, there have been great horned owls reported in that area pretty frequently. So keep an ear open for that after dark. And there's always even a long shot to see maybe even a boreal owl or maybe even a flammulated owl. So something to keep an eye out for. 
I would say to bring your binoculars for birding there, but I don't believe that a full-on scope is probably needed. It might be a little bit overkill for that area. But make no mistake about it, what most people come here for, what this area is known for, is of course, it's moose. And it is spectacular. I never want to say there is a 100% guarantee that you would see something, but it is almost a guarantee that you will see moose around Brainerd Lake. As far as moose hotspots, you're in luck because they start right as you get through the gate after you turn your pass in. I'm going to suggest skipping Red Rock Lake, which comes up on your left-hand side about a half mile in. It is beautiful, and don't worry, we'll come back there later. Resist that temptation and keep heading down the road towards the main Brainerd Lake parking area. Along that road, drive slow and look on the south side of the road, or the left-hand side if you're driving in, and you're gonna see a bunch of empty meadows full of willows, which is what moose like to eat. They need 40 to 60 pounds of food a day, so keep an eye out in all these meadows that line that road heading towards the main Brainerd Lake campground area. Once you get to the main parking lot, don't park. Continue on the road to the left and head towards the Niwot picnic area. There's a few more meadows right along Brainerd Lake that can make that iconic shot if you time it right. The moose will come out of that meadow and go down to the lake to get a nice big drink of water and that's the dream photo for this location. Continue up to the Mitchell Trailhead parking loop. Drive slowly again, you'll pass a few more meadows. And along the way, you might get lucky. Make the little loop at Mitchell Lake Trailhead, and then head back down towards the Long Lake Trailhead. It's a similar little road that goes up and does a little loop, so keep your eye out there. If you don't see anything along this route, then you can start heading back, go through Niwot Picnic Area again, and then head back to the main parking lot. Now that we've parked, it's time to load our gear up and we're gonna go for a little bit of a hike to the other hotspots to see these moose. Take the paved road that goes on the southeast side of the lake. Don't worry, it's not actually open to any vehicle traffic. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna to wanna to loop back around to the Niwot picnic area, because that is where the Long Lake Trailhead picks up. Take that trailhead up the hill, it's about a mile, and it's not very difficult hiking, and you're gonna head up towards Long Lake. As you start getting closer to Long Lake, you're gonna see a fork in the road. Go to the right and cross over the bridge that goes over the South St. Vrain Creek. Take some photos. Trust me, once you get there, you'll see why you wanna take some photos. Follow that trail around Long Lake to the left, and eventually you're gonna to come to some willow meadows, and this is another very good hotspot to see the moose. In fact, here's what I saw just this past weekend. And now at the end of the video, I'll give my final recommendation on what I think the best plan of attack could be for you to go to Brainerd Lake and make the best wildlife photos possible. I would go on a weekday if possible. If weekends are all that are available to you, you're gonna be fine. But what I would do is I would take that late time slot. I would take the 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. time slot for entry. And I like that entry time for two reasons. 
First, that gets you there with the least amount of people. This timed entry, the late one, is by far the least popular, so it's easy to get and you will run into the least amount of people. And that also gets you in the park for that ever important golden hour, which is when wildlife becomes the most active and also could present a great sunset opportunity right over any of the lakes up there. So that is my recommendation. I would get there right at five o'clock, kind of cruise around like I mentioned earlier in the video and go check some of the hot spots. It gives you plenty of time to hike up to Long Lake, check out the hot spots up there, and then you have the perfect amount of time to get back down to the Brainerd Lake area right for golden hour and hopefully get that iconic shot of the moose in the lake. And that is my recommendation. And if you still have some time left before it gets too dark, you can hit that Red Rock Lake on the way out, which also has a chance for moose. I told you we'd get back to that. <laughs> but anyways, those are my recommendations. I wish you the best of luck. And of course, if you get some good stuff, uh, leave a link in the comments what you saw. Hello, I did just wanna jump in here at the end and thank you for watching the first episode in my Colorado iconic photography guides uh, for various locations all across Colorado. Uh, so the first one that I've made is the first time I've ever tried to make anything like this. So hopefully it had some good information for you in there and hopefully it's useful. Um, if so, always appreciate a thumbs up. Um, and if you wanna see more wildlife photography stuff, that's what my channel is all based on. So go ahead and give me a sub if you want. And um, yeah, I did just want to make a few sort of closing remarks about Brainerd. Um, it's so incredible. And I mean, for the value, 16 bucks for the day is absolutely worth it. Um, so definitely try to get up there if you haven't been. And um, I did want to say, to remember when you get your reservation from the website, it sends it to your email, um, immediately go to your phone and actually download those passes into your Apple or Google wallet, um, whatever you have, because um, when you get up to the park, there is no cell phone reception. So if you maybe had made the reservation like a month in advance and you get up to the park and you're going through your phone trying to find like an old email, there's no reception up there. So you may not be able to pull the pass from an old email. So just make sure you already have that stuff saved on your phone. Um, or you could go old school and just print it out on paper. <laughs> be very, very old school, um, but that would work too. Um, and then also on that similar note, remember if you rely on like any trail apps, um, to get around like on the hiking trails up there make sure you get those all downloaded to your phone before you get up there because yeah, there's no reception um, I also wanted to make a remark on some of the facilities there um, The restrooms which I would normally not mention but they were so good <laughs> I thought I wanted to uh, mention that um, For pit style bathrooms They were very clean and you could see they had checklists like where the employees would come and make sure they did like hourly checks to the bathroom, so they were very clean. So if you do have any sort of restroom needs, fear not, you're gonna be good. And uh, also throughout the parking lot, they had ample places to put trash or recycling, they do both. And um, yeah, just the facilities themselves are just so well kept. And um, my brief interaction I had with any of the staff up there, they were super, super, super nice. So. Um, again, all thumbs up in those regards, and I thought was worth mentioning here at the end. But uh, thanks again for watching this new series that uh, I hope people are finding useful. So um, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.